All right, in this video we are going to do a, a quick look at the history of MySQL and how it came to be. So a quick overview about MySQL. Uh, it's got over 100 million downloads, so it's by far the, the most popular database in history. Like we've said before, it is a relational database management system. It is owned by Oracle, but MySQL is open source under GPL, and it is absolutely free to use. You'll hear some people say MySQL, but officially the documentation is uh, pronounced MySQL. So that is the official way, but you'll hear some people calling it MySQL as well. So industrialize it. It's okay to say it either way. Now, in 1995, a Swedish company called MySQL AB created it. The original developers included Monty, Michael Monty Wideness, I think, David Axmark, and Alan Larson. So MySQL is actually named after Monty's daughter, Mai. So that's how he came up with the name of MySQL. And it's been released under uh, GPL. It's a GNU public license in 2000. And by 2001, it had over 2 million active installations. So it, it rapidly gained in popularity once it was released as open source. In 2005, Oracle acquired Innobase. That is the company behind the storage backend of MySQL. And as it grew, you can see here in uh, 2006, MySQL had over 8 million installations, 320 employees, over 25 com uh, countries. Now, Sun Microsystems actually bought MySQL in 2008 for $1 billion. So it had become a, a choice database for uh, large corporations, banks, and telecoms because of its durability and reliability and scalability. And then in 2010, Oracle went after Sun Microsystems. There were some legal issues there with the EU, but the purchase was finalized. So Oracle Corporation wound up through this acquisition of Sun with MySQL. And this caused a lot of concern in the, in the community. And so Monty there actually left Sun Microsystems and developed a fork of MySQL called MariaDB. And this was... A lot of people were concerned about what was going to happen with MySQL. There's a lot of cynical people in the industry that thought Oracle saw MySQL as a competitor and they were going to crush it and stop it. But uh, that has not happened. MySQL does continue. Uh, Oracle is seeing a lot of success with the product. And uh, MariaDB still is 100% compatible with MySQL uh, API-wise. The code base has been, been forked and they're developing it separately from MySQL. But if you want to use it, the API itself, the commands that you use are exactly the same as MySQL. Some of the features of MySQL, like we said previously, it is a relational database management system. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it does support the ANSI standards. So, like I said previously in the course, the ANSI standards on MySQL is largely uh, interpreted, So, but it, it does do a, a pretty good job of supporting the ANSI standards. MySQL under the covers is written in C and C++. These are very popular programming languages. They do compile down to native uh, machine code, but you can compile it on many different platforms. That's why My MySQL is so easy to port to different operating systems. MySQL is known for being very fast, stable, and scalable. Then we talked about MySQL clients. The client is the chunk of software that you're going to use to talk to the database. So you're going to have a communication pipe there going to the database. You have clients for all the, the major popular uh, programming languages. So uh, it's just supports just about everything you can think of. Now, some of the features of, of the database, you can write stored procedures. And this is a piece of code inside of the database that executes against the database. So it runs locally on the database. Triggers, we really haven't discussed those yet. Triggers are a piece of code that, so when a something happens in the database, like you insert a record, the trigger will run before or after that transaction. Cursors are something that you can use to get a large set of data and they kind of let you point at a place in the data so you can scroll through it and like give me the next record, give me the next record. So that, that is a programming thing. Updated views. So views are uh, like a virtual table. It's an actual SQL view, but you store that inside the database. And then query caching. This is a technology where the database is going to remember in memory, in real memory, the results of your query. So when you ask for that data again, it doesn't have to go back to the, the file system to find the data. It will be stored in real memory. So that's something that really speeds up the performance of the database. 
And then uh, Sub Selects, that's a, a nice feature where you can have uh, nested queries, and we will definitely be seeing some of that uh, head in the course when we get there. And then ACID compliance. So this is a, a very important thing as far as the how databases work. So ACID is a concept of when you have multiple users on the system, if you're going to have like a series of sequence uh, statements in a sequence, so that should uh, all those statements should complete or none of them should complete. So this is inside of a transaction. Think about if I'm you know, a good example would be if I'm creating a an order, I'm going to insert a order header record, then I'm going to insert like the lines that happen. So what this is saying that if I'm doing that in a, inside of a database transaction, all those statements should complete or none of them complete. So meaning that if the last order line had an error, none of them, that I wouldn't have a half-baked transaction in the database. And we will get, get into transactions in the future in the course. Consistency, so they are valid according to the rules of the database. So we talked about that previously for the data types and different constraints that we can do. Isolation, so the results of the transactions are done end-to-end. -end. So they function in isolation, and when they commit, they become available to others. Durability, so once the transaction is committed, it remains so. The community likes to joke about MongoDB losing data, so that this is important. So once you get back a response that your transaction is committed, you can trust that that data is actually stored in the database. Some of the no SQL databases actually do not support ACID compliance. They trade your data integrity away for speed and performance. So underneath the covers of the database, there's a lot that's going to be happening there maintaining this ACID compliance. So this is a, a very important feature. And this is why, obviously, like banks really like MySQL because it, this ACID compliance ensures that your financial transaction completes the way you expect it to. So it's a very important thing here. MySQL additions. We have the MySQL Community Edition. This is the edition of MySQL that we are going to be using. It is free. Uh, like I said, it's open source on your GPL. And the Community Edition it means that it's uh, open source, but you only get community support. So if you had a business and you're running MySQL and had a problem with it, you would have to go out to support forums and post there and see if you can get somebody to help you. And it, it is a pretty vibrant community, so not a bad thing to do. A lot of companies will go to MySQL Standard Edition, and this is about $2,000 per year per server. And I have a little squiggly line in there because there are some constraints around a uh, number of CPU sockets that you have on that server. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, but uh, roughly $2,000 per year per server. And what this does is gives you 24-7 support from Oracle. So if you have any problems, you can call up Oracle and get resolution with it. So this is something that companies want when you're running a business. If there's something that happens to your database, obviously you're going to want to be able to resolve that problem very rapidly. Technology-wise, it's technically the same as Community Edition. The biggest thing is that you have that support and the guarantee of support from Oracle. Now, we also have MySQL Enterprise Edition. So this is for larger operations. So when you're getting into a more significant operation where you have more users, more transactions on the database, you're running a bigger system, this gives you features for what's called cluster routing and partitioning. So cluster routing is you're going to have several database servers acting as one, and the, the routing is how your connections come in and get distributed across the uh, server nodes. Partitioning is a very interesting technology. What this says, if I have a table with, a, let's say, a billion rows in the table that's going to be stored on a, a disk somewhere, on disk somewhere, and partitioning is a way to divide up that table across multiple disks with different storage options. And what this allows the system to do is go after that data because your disk is going to be the slowest thing that happens in, inside a computer. And it allows multiple threads to go after that data. So it's a big performance boost for large sets of data. And then, of course, the Enterprise Edition also includes uh, enterprise tooling for monitoring, backups, and security. Then you get thread pooling in this. I saw some performance charts on it. MySQL Standard Edition does not have thread pooling. And as you get into higher and higher server loads, as more and more people are connecting to the database, thread pooling becomes very important. And th this is going to be for some pretty high-end databases. MySQL Standard Edition is going to handle quite a bit. So these are for really large things. And then the, the big boy is uh, MySQL Cluster CGE. This 
think of like telecoms. This is like for design for near linear scalability through clustering and it's high volume, high availability. So that this is for really large, large operations. Like think of Verizon doing text messages. They might have a MySQL cluster behind those text messages. So real, real big stuff. So we're not going to get into these. The, the one that we are going to be using is the community edition. We can learn a tremendous amount from that. And coming up in the course, we'll be talking about how to install that.